The sponsor of the video is PCBWay. Now they're one of the top PCB manufacturers out there and you can quickly have your projects ready made for you within 24 hours with their 24 hour service. They also do have assembly and flashing services and it's the company I always use whenever I create a product and or project. So go ahead and check the links down below. In today's video, we're taking a look at all new ESC from Flycolor. Now this is called the Flycolor X Cross 45 Amp 3D6 S ESC. So as the name implies, it's gonna take anywhere between 3S to 6S voltage so if you're looking for a 6s build this is going to be a great candidate and i'll explain why in a bit here now first of all let's take a look at some of the things they provide you in the packaging and also talk slightly about fly color because i don't think a lot of people possibly know a lot about fly color so as we can tell here they give us two tiny heat shrinks and what you would actually use these for is the low esr capacitors legs and it's highly recommended you install this and i'll show you how to do that in this video. They also provide us with a bunch of nylon standoffs and also metal screws. This is really great because usually the long nylon screws tend to break in crashes and this will keep it more secure if you're going to be using it. However, I really would have preferred to see a different type of metal screw because the head on these are slightly too big and especially if you're using a bottom mount frame where the battery is mounted on the bottom, this will dig right into that. So that's something I would have done slightly differently here. They also provide us with two connectors and I'll explain what each of them does here. So we have one straight connector that's going to be two fly color products and another connector which should fit most of the other flight controllers that have some sort of input connector. And as you can tell the fly color connector is slightly larger than the other normal type standard I would say. It's not really a standard just yet but we could say standard and we'll get into that in a little bit here. And they also give us a pre-made XT60 which is really great not a lot of companies do that. However I would have preferred a slightly larger gauge of wire but this will get the job done on just about anything and the length is really good usually they come super long usually when you have super long battery wires it can introduce some noise into your system so keep that in mind the shorter it is the better it is overall and they also give us a Rubicon, which is a proper 35 volt low ESR capacitor. So they're expecting you to be setting this up on a 6S, which is something really great here. So now let's take a look at the ESC itself. Now, this is a really great contender for a 6S build due to a couple reasons. There are a couple things that I usually look for, which is the FET size. The FET size to me is very important. It doesn't dictate that much, but it does tell you that it's going to be able to handle much, much more. For example, I would be afraid to put a 20 by 20 ESC with 3 by 3 FETs into a very power hungry 6s build i i probably fry eventually maybe in a crash or something but sometimes you'll just be fine but this is my personal preference and this is what i look for also as you can tell these little capacitors here this is another thing that i look for which means it has a lot of filtration so the chances of you getting video noise or some sort of noise in your system is going to be reduced significantly especially with this amount of capacitors here now as you can tell there are some components here missing and i'll explain what those are because i think this comes in two different flavors and we have the cheaper version which is basically without a 5 volt regulator and this is where the 5 volt regulator would have been if this was the board with the 5 volt regulator now as you can tell the filtration is really great also the mosfet size is really great this is what i look for especially for high demanding setups and fly color is a well-known brand they've been in the market before fpv drones they've been doing escs for a very very long time so they know what the hell they're doing here which is something you always want to look for as well now as you can tell here this is running a shot resistor one which gives you the amp draw for the whole ESC and it is BL Heli 32 so it's a, again it's a shame that these 30 by 30s are coming just with one shunt resistor the whole idea of the, th the BL Heli 32 software was to have a shunt resistor for each ESC to get the telemetry and the current of each ESC operating but now we just have a dedicated one for all four motors so it's still better than nothing. Now, if we flip it over, what we see is we see a really fat heat sink here. It's a really nice heat sink. And it's covering basically 50% of the FETs on the board because the other side has the other FETs. Now, this is still pretty good. It's not bad. It is going to help quite dramatically up in the air, especially if you're running a high demanding setup. And if we take a closer look here, we see they have the rubber grommets already pre-installed and they're pretty stiff. And I, I really like seeing that here. You don't really need them, but it's always nice to have. Now, if you take a closer look here, what we see is a 5 volt 3 amp but this is not the case so uh this flavor right here which we'll have linked down below does not have this 5 volt regulator so keep that in mind so now let's go ahead and discuss how we would go about connecting this so a 4-in-1 esc's orientation is very important such as the flight controller because each motor has a number we have motor one two three and four and those have to be in a specific place especially if you're running beta flight and in beta flight the motor orientation or the mo motor order is as follows we have motor one back here motor two motor three 
and motor four. And usually all four in one ESCs do have the uh, motors labeled. So you can see motor one right in that corner, motor two, motor three, motor four. So this should be installed in your quadcopter just like this. Now, if you know what you're doing, you could do away with this, but if you don't know what you're doing, just install it like this. So everything will work out of the box and you won't run into really massive issues. Now, and again, some people don't know every motor has three wires. So these three wires will correspond to motor one. These three will correspond to motor two and then these three, motor three, and then these three, motor four. And that way you're set to go. However, now we also need to apply power and we also have the low ESR capacitor. Now the low ESR capacitor is very important to install, especially if you're going to be running a 6S build. Even if not, I always highly recommend you install these capacitors. It just filters out all the bad noise or all the bad voltage spikes that could fry your components. So it's always really great to install these and it's always really nice to see when an ESC provides you with a proper low ESR capacitor. So now for the battery or the power, how are we going to apply power to this thing? Well, we have the minus right here, which is going to be the ground, which is the black wire. The positive is always going to be the red wire, which is the positive. And if we take a closer look here, we have the XT60. Now, one thing to always take a note with XT60s that are pre-made, that not a lot of people discuss. I've had some of these come inverted, which could ruin your whole quadcopter, even worse, probably catch fire. So what you want to do is you want to find the plus icon or the plus sign on the XC60 and make sure it's the red wire. And same thing on the other side, there we go, we have the minus and that's the ground, which is good. So this XC60 was made proper. Now with big brand companies, you really rarely ever see that, but it's always really nice to check so you don't ruin the whole thing. Now, how would we install this? Well, it's very simple. The black wire is gonna go to the minus here, that's where you'd wanna solder it. And then the positive is going to go on the positive here. Now, something to also take into consideration, this seems like it's gonna have a lot of heat dissipation, as you can tell, it's properly made. So what that means is your ground, when you're going to be soldering your ground, it's going to be much, much more difficult than the positive side. So you might want to increase that temperature or yeah, just basically increase that temperature and make sure you have a lot of solder on your soldering iron so the heat transfers better. So that's something to take note of and just be aware of here. So now we have the low ESR capacitor. Now, how is this going to be installed? Well, it's going to be pretty simple. First of all, cut it to length. It's going to depend on your setup, how your quadcopter has space, if you have the luxury of space. So let's just say we have the luxury of space and we want it like right about there. So you want to trim these to exactly where you want them right about here. And then you want to slide the heat shrinks first before you start soldering. So one thing I forgot to mention was where you see the white strip on the capacitor, the leg where that white strip is will go to the minus sign, which will go to the ground, which will be soldered with the black wire. So make sure you install that correctly. Now you might need to trim the heat shrink depending on how long the legs are going to be and make sure you install the heat shrink before you start soldering. Now, the reason you install the heat shrink is because it's very easy, depending on your setup, for these two to touch. Now, if these two touch, that is the worst thing you would ever want your quadcopter to do, is the main battery, positive and negative, to touch, and thus ruining your whole quadcopter, or even worse, catching fire on your table. So that's something you always wanna be careful of. So that's why they provide the heat shrink, which is really nice to see as well. It's a, it's a nice small touch, and it's a really great touch, in my opinion here. Now let's discuss how this would actually fit into the market. Well, it's priced at 45 bucks, so you're paying $1 per amp, and it is 6S capable, and they also provide you with just about everything you need. So this is what I would consider mid to high range setup right here. The company is a high performing company, or like they're, they're, they release great products because they've done this for so long, and um, you just, you really never have to worry about them. I have so many fly color ESCs, and none of them ever really had anything bad go with them and i've tested quite a lot in my previous days which i'll start the testing again very soon after the whole human virus thing has passed away now let's take a look at the connection side because this is where it gets interesting this is where i think a lot of people get lost here once this is connected we can see our layout which is a really nice touch here i don't see this much it's this tiny sticker that's going to go there and tell you what every wire is for and that is very very useful especially if you're going to be rerouting this wire especially if you didn't buy the flight controller that comes with this uh, esc like i did here so here we have two grounds. Now these grounds are going to go anywhere. You don't need to use both of them. You just need one of them. So you could easily just remove one of the wires there and just keep one of the grounds. Now I highly recommend you remove the one right in the middle here because that keeps space between the battery voltage and also the ground, which are basically these two right here. So they're just routed right there as well. And those will go in your flight controller. So the black wire will go to the ground or ground pad on your flight controller. 
and the red wire, the VBAT. Now be careful, the VBAT wire, which is the third one down, will go to your positive side of your flight controller. Now you also need to take something into consideration before connecting it to your flight controller. You wanna make sure your flight controller takes battery voltage. If it only takes a five volt input, then you will immediately fry your flight controller. So keep that in mind and that's very important. Most flight controllers come that take VBAT voltage or battery voltage. So just take a note of that when you're doing this because the five volt regulator on this one is not uh, present here. NC means not connected, which is gonna be the fourth wire down here. It's also red, so you probably would just wanna remove that. You're not gonna need that here. And once we move down after not connected, we have four, three, two, one, and these correspond to the motors, one, two, three, and four. So we have one, two, and three, and four, and those will go exactly where your flight controller says motor input one. It will probably say M1 or just the number one or S1, S2, S3, S4. So you just match them exactly. So there's one, you put it on an S1 or an M1, whatever it might be on your flight controller. Two is gonna go on an M1, oh, sorry, an M2 or an S2. So just match the numbers to the signal output on your flight controller. Next we have the current. So this is the current reading. This is the from the shunt resistance. It'll tell you how much current you're drawing on your on-screen display. And usually all flight controllers have a dedicated pad that says uh, current or CNT or CR, depending on what it is. Uh, this is where you'd wanna connect that wire, which is the one before the last here. So you're gonna wanna cut this actually. So I forgot to mention that. You're gonna wanna cut this right here and use these wires. Now, the last thing on the list here is the TX. So this is ESC telemetry. You can use it, but I mean, if you're gonna be using RPM filtering, I would use it. But if you don't know what that is and you don't wanna really play around with it, it's not really that necessary since, um, you know, it's not gonna give you very useful information. So you, do, you could just completely cut this off and ignore it and then a later day come and try to set that up. But you really don't need ESC telemetry, again, unless you're gonna be running RPM filtering. And that's basically it, it's very simple. Just match everything correctly, make sure your flight controller takes battery voltage so you don't fry it, and that's it. It's a really nice, heavy ESC, so it's properly made. I mean, you could even see what they've done here with the edge plating. This is a very expensive process to do, and that just says a lot about an ESC. So it is a proper ESC, and they're doing a really, really great job, and that's something I really like here. So that's gonna include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please check the links down below. Those greatly support the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.